putting up a distant cousin who was coming to New York to audition at uh, some of New York's uh, finest music schools, at Juilliard, the Manhattan School of Music, and the Steinhardt School of Music at NYU. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, a sucker for a sob story. And uh, so I, I emailed back to my friend Mira, and I said, yes, Mira, I would be willing to put up your cousin for a week while he does his auditions. And a week or two later, this young man, uh, Emmerhan, showed up at my doorstep. Uh, he barely spoke a word of English. Uh, he had his cello and a suitcase and a ratty leather jacket, which he still wears. <laughs> and uh, he stayed at my house uh, for about a week, and he did his auditions at the schools, and he then dutifully headed back to Turkey. Um, and he did get uh, accepted uh, to NYU. Uh, provisionally, he, they, they wanted him to come back to New York and take uh, the ESL course to prepare himself uh, language-wise so that he could uh, continue his musical studies in, in New York City. Um, and you know, this is by, I'm trying to give you the, the personal, the human side of this story. Uh, Suzanne uh, has the, uh, the all of Emmerhan's uh, wonderful accolades and so forth in the program, so you can read about all the wonderful things that he has accomplished in his short career. But he, he did come back to New York, and the only catch was he didn't have any place to stay. <laughs> So Emmerhan ended up living at the bed and breakfast in the basement uh, with me and Marco uh, for how, how many months? Six. Six months. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and there, you know, there, there are more details that after a couple of glasses of wine I will share with you if you come <laughs> and ask me for them. But <clears throat> after six months, uh, Emmerhan went back to Istanbul for the summer, and then was to return in September to begin his studies at the, at the NYU. And he, uh, the last thing I said to him when he left for Istanbul was, as soon as you get home, go see an ENT and get those tonsils out. He snored <laughs> like a sawbell. And uh, it was it was it was an incredible six months is all I can say. Um, but in any case, he came back, <clears throat> and he, he, having watched him grow and mature as a musician uh, over the past six years, and if you do get a chance to speak with him, uh, his facility with the English language uh, over that short period is astonishing when you consider that he. And you know, it just convinces me more than ever that there there is a link between your musical ability and your language ability and those sorts of things. Um, it's it's he's a phenomenon both both musically and in, and in many many other ways. And and I feel very blessed uh, that we have him in our lives. And he comes to he now lives. I've convinced my neighbor to rent him a room. He now lives next door to me in Park Slope in a beautiful brownstone on Prospect Park West. And he does uh, from time to time come to the bed and breakfast. And we do concertos, and Emmerhan puts them all together and brings in the musicians, and we have wonderful programs in the B&B &B in Brooklyn. Um, so if any of you are ever interested, just keep an eye on our Facebook page or our website, and uh, maybe you can check yourselves in for a weekend when Emmerhan is having a program. They're very wonderful. It's wonderful. They're like no more than 15 or 20 people, and we sit around and listen to beautiful music and uh, drink wine and eat good food. In any case, Emmerhan is going to uh, entertain us before dinner with some box solo suites for cello, and uh, I hope you will enjoy them as much as I enjoy them. I feel like many of these I almost have memorized, and uh, it's, it's sublime. Emmerhan, thank you so much.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 